So I work with nonprofits on creating brands of attraction so that they can connect with long-term loyal donors and raise more money. 70% of giving to nonprofits is through individuals. And a nonprofit's ability to thrive and grow really depends on their ability to connect with individuals and, and bring them into their organization as long-term loyal donors. And that's exactly what I help people do. So I've been doing this work for a really long time. And I learned a lesson, which was that I was teaching people how to do things differently. I was giving them tools. And those tools weren't really working for them because the culture, their organization, didn't really support those tools. So for instance, if we would create stronger messaging or a more engaging website, that organization maybe not feel, would not feel comfortable with that or really excited to share that message. So the idea is not to teach you tools, but to help your organization adopt a brand of attraction, which means being strong in message, not worrying so much about who doesn't like you and trying to convince them, but really focusing in on who are those like-minded people who care about what you care about and drawing them towards you. And so in order to be successful at a brand of attraction, it really takes the whole organization supporting this shift and really owning this idea of being strong in message to attract like-minded people to you. So how I got started with Courageous Communication was in my therapist's office. I was sitting in my therapist's office and I was telling her a story about a friend who had given me a bit of a criticism and how that hurt me. And she said, well, you know, Marianne, praise and criticism are the same thing. And I thought, well, that's ridiculous because one feels really good and one feels really bad. And she said, but really a whole person can manage praise and criticism and doesn't need either one, right? You don't need praise to feel good about yourself and criticism doesn't derail you. And so managing praise and criticism is really key to being a whole functioning person. And at that moment, I realized my nonprofit clients were overly dependent on praise and terrified of criticism. And because of that, they were sending these really bland messages because they were afraid to do or say something interesting because then they thought, well, what if somebody criticizes? What if somebody doesn't like it? So that's when I came up with the philosophy of courageous communication to really not worry about the critics and focus more on sending messages to those like-minded people and bringing them into your organization. So my passion is working with nonprofits and that is because it's really been my life's mission. Uh, I was an advertising major in college and I was also active in social justice work and the nonprofit gave me the ability to use my creative brain and my empathy together to work together. And I've been working in, with, for, and around nonprofits for 25 years. And I created Courageous Communication as a way for nonprofit organizations to really find their power, find their voice, and understand the strengths that they bring to the community so that they can really find those really long-term, meaningful, important donors that are really gonna be with them for a long time. And I love when I see organizations who felt a little lost or felt like they did great work, but they just didn't know how to share their story. And I love it when they get to share their story and they get to feel that the, the message that they share is reflective of the work they do and represents them well. And the power that that gives them is really what fuels me. So one concept I'd like to share is that I am starting a revolution and I invite people to join me. And the revolution I am starting is to change the way that we talk about nonprofit, even the word nonprofit. It's, it's we're defining ourselves by a negative, by what we're not, which is we don't make a profit, which is really the least interesting thing about us. And when we define ourselves by this negative, it kind of messes with our collective self-esteem especially in a society that values profit as a successful indicator, right? So if your business is making a profit, you are a success. And since we don't make a profit, we often seem like we're left out, like the business community is at the Thanksgiving table and, us, and our nonprofits are stuck at the kids table. So I wanna change the language and the language I wanna use is, is human investment company. 
And when I say I work for a human investment company, that's a whole nother level of energy, right? I'm not coming from a place of powerlessness. I'm coming from a place of power. And I am saying that I am equal to the investor. So it, it honors both the nonprofit or the human investment company as a, has an equal stake in the relationship and in an investor and an investee and they work together to create something more than they could have created alone. And when we work together as investors and human investment companies, we do create more than we could have ever created alone. And when we use that language, then it allows us to understand our power and, and the, understand what we bring to the world, which is we're the safety net, we're the social justice fabric, we're the arts, we're culture, we're everything that gives us meaning. And so just because our model looks a little different, right? And just because we take the profit and we roll it back in, doesn't make us any less viable as any other industry. And so when we start changing the language that we use around nonprofit, then, then it really helps us come from a place of power and it helps us really attract those powerful people into our organizations who are gonna help us thrive.